good morning to all of you today we are going to start the working stress method of design last lecture already we have seen what is mean by limit state method and what is mean by ultimate load method that all method we have already seen okay so today we are going to start with the working stress method so what is mean by working stress method already we have discussed the working stress method use the elastic theory and in elastic theory what are the stresses in elastic zone those stresses only we are going to consider for design of working stress in the design of working stress method okay as there are many methods or philosophies of design okay uh, of design but uh, we are going to today see what is working stress method and how we are going to use the working stress method for a design of concrete structure okay here you can see in working stress method it will be assumed that the concrete and steel are elastic that already i have discussed with you people that working stress method use elastic theory here you can see the two material concrete and steel are elastic and they are subjected to a such stresses that the component remain elastic the stresses that the component remain elastic and the maximum stresses induced in the component do not exceed the allowable stresses the allowable stresses in a working stress method is given in is 456-2000 in is 456-2000 those allowable stresses we are going to use okay and with the help of that allowable stresses we are going to use we are going to design the structures by using working stress method okay so these are the allowable permissible or allowable stresses given in is 456-2000 okay for concrete the permissible stresses in concrete in tension as per clause number b 2.1.1 page number 18 the here you can see the grade of concrete m10 m15 m20 m25 like this up to m15 and the tensile stresses okay these are the permissible stresses in concrete for tension okay in tension so tensile stress here for m10 1.2 for m15 to like this okay up to m15 and from m15 tensile stress is 5.2 similar way in is 4 by 6 they have given the permissible stresses in a concrete in in compression okay is this compression that is in bending so, so that table number 21 page number 18 so here actually this is in not tension this is in compression okay so bending stresses here and direct stresses so bending stresses you can see for m10 concrete for m15 concrete like up to the m50 concrete and the bending stresses here they are given for m10 concrete 3 for m15 concrete 5 okay so factor of safety for considering the bending stresses they have taken 3 you can see here if m20 concrete that is 7 if m15 it is 5 so and approximately the uh, factor of safety they have considered three and for direct stresses they have considered the factor of safety four okay so three and four respectively for bending and direct stresses so these are the permissible stresses given in is456 that we are going to use for design of working stress method sorry in a working a design working stress method so permissible stresses in steel also they have given in is456 so permissible stresses for mild steel that is fe 255 and tor steel fe 415 so tension in tension the bar up to 20 mm diameter means the if the diameter of bar is up to 20 meter only in that case we are going to use the stress instead of 250 140 newton per mm square and for fe 415 steel we are going to use the stress 230 mm that is this is when when the bar diameter is less than 20 mm and next when bar, bar diameter is greater than 20 mm in that case mild steel stress we are going to consider 130 newton per mm square and for fe 415 we are going to consider it is 230 and same way in a compression also we are going to reduce the stresses we are going to consider that is 130 and for fe 415 that we are going to consider 190 okay so here the factor of safety considered for the steel is 1.8 because this is much lower than the concrete due to better quality of control during the production of the steel already you are aware that when you are going when people are uh, preparing the steels or manufacturing the steels in that case there is a less chance 
okay that steel is going to reduce its strength compared to the concrete because in concrete on site if there is the batching consideration water cement ratio so there are various chances of reducing the strength so that's why the factor of safety used there three and four and here concrete in the steel they are we are going to use here the factor of safety 1.8 okay as given in is 4.6 2000 next thing certain assumptions when we are going to design any structural element by using working stress method the following assumptions given in is 4 by 6 generally the working stress method nowadays not used in the practice for construction of residential building or the commercial building the working stress method generally used for design of the water retaining structures okay as or you people aware that in working stress method there is a no need of a serviceability conditions I mean there is a no effect of cracks deflection because already heavy sizes of member we are going to use so that's why there is a no chance of that deflection cracks so that's why in working stress method is used for the water retaining structure till later also okay so working stress method not used in construction of residential buildings or commercial buildings but it is going to use for the the structure which retain the water okay so, uh, so assumptions for working stress method given in IS 4 by 6 again, page number 80, clause number B 1.3. So, these what are the assumptions? At any cross section, plane section before bending remain plane after the bending. Okay, so this is assumption when you, you, you take any transfer section before loading and after loading that is going to remain same. All tensile stresses should be could be taken by reinforcement. And none by concrete so assumption is all tensile stresses should be taken by reinforcement here okay that is steel and except as a otherwise specifically permitted okay if, in, if there is any special case in that case it is permitted the stress strain relationship of steel and concrete under working load it is a straight line okay so here is a stress strain relationship for steel and concrete it is considered as a straight line the modular ratio that is m that is the ratio of modulus of elasticity of steel to the modulus of elasticity of concrete that is modular ratio that value is given 280 by 3 into sigma cbc sigma cbc here stress in bending okay in compression that sigma cbc where the permissible compressive stress due to the bending in a concrete is newton per m square as specified in table number 21 you can refer table number 21 we will going to get the values of sigma cbc All, earlier already we have seen that thing okay here you can see this that sigma cbc values okay so next after assumption next next thing we are going to see before going to uh, start the problems on working stress method we have to understood the stress strain diagram if i am going to consider a singly reinforced beam okay which having the width b and depth small d Okay, effective depth is a small d and overall depth is a capital D if this is a beam section. I am going to consider the stresses at above the neutral axis is a positive and will the neutral axis is a negative. How it is if you are going to consider any beam and if you are going to apply the load on beam, the beam is going to bend like this. And if you are going to cut the beam here, you can see those compression at top and tension at bottom. And here somewhere is a neutral axis. The neutral axis, the axis which don't have any stresses, zero stresses, and it's going to change the 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 sign going to change of the diagram at the point of neutral axis. So here you can see if this is a neutral axis point, the top part we are going to consider compression as a positive and tension as a negative. Okay, and this is uh, so first we are going to see the strain diagram. In strain diagram, this is, you can see the epsilon C and epsilon ST, the strain in concrete and strain in steel. Okay, I am going to consider here the position of neutral axis from the top compression fiber of the beam. From the top compression of fiber of the beam to the neutral axis, that distance I am going to consider as a EMD. Okay, on the remaining distance here, already you people you can see here, this is small d. We are going to consider the diagram only at the steel level. At the center of steel level, so if total distance is a D and this distance is a ND, so remaining distance obviously D minus ND. Okay, so this is strain diagram. Similar way, we are going to consider if you are going to consider the stress diagram. In stress diagram, here you can see the stress bending stress in a compression for the concrete as per as, as that uh, value 
ओके सिग्मा सीबी एस पर आईएस फोर बाय सिक्स वी हैव टू टेक एंड द सिग्मा एसटी ये परमिसिबल स्ट्रेसेस इन अ स्टील इफ यू आर गोइंग टू कंसीडर द इक्विवेलेंट स्ट्रेस डायग्राम ओके इक्विवेलेंट स्ट्रेस डायग्राम हियर यू कैन सी दिस इज अ सिग्मा सीबीसी एंड इफ यू आर गोइंग टू कंसीडर द स्ट्रेसेस इन स्टील यू कैन सी हियर सिग्मा एसटी बाय एम व्हाई बिकॉज़ ऑफ एम इफ यू आर गोइंग टू कंसीडर द दिस इक्वेशन ओके मॉडल रेशियो इक्वेशन यू आर गोइंग टू गेट द वैल्यू इफ सिग्मा सीबीसी डैश आई एम गोइंग टू कंसीडर दिस इज सिग्मा एसटी डिवाइडेड बाय सिग्मा एम दैट इज मॉडुलर रेशियो एंड द वैल्यू ऑफ मॉडुलर रेशियो as per is 456 we are going to consider 280 by 3 into sigma cbc and if you are going to see the stress block diagram so based upon this stress block diagram we are going to calculate actually stresses due to this concrete and steel what happen and how to calculate the moment resistance capacity of the section that we are going to see so uh, that whatever the earlier sections we, we have taken of the beam same section i am going to take here so this is strain diagram and this is stress diagram In stress diagram, I can see you can see here. This is stress diagram. I have drawn maximum stress at a beam, at top of the beam, and the minimum stress, zero stress, is the neutral axis. Already I have explained to you people. If this is beam, if beam is going to bend due to external loading, beam is going to bend like this. So compression maximum at top fiber of the beam. So I am considering sigma CBC stresses at maximum stress at top of the beam and neutral axis there is zero stresses. Okay. So linearly we can draw the diagram. This is the stress diagram of concrete. And when we are going to deal with the uh, part of the below the neutral axis, already we have made assumptions in the steel only the steel is going to take only the tensile stresses not the compressive stresses so this part of concrete we are going to ignore and we are going to consider the only stresses in steel okay so sigma st we are going to consider only and based upon that we are going to calculate the forces so if you know the value of the stresses based upon stresses we can calculate the value of force the basic formula which we are going to use sigma is equal to p by a. okay so this formula you people are aware the stress is equal to force upon area i required value of force so force is equal to stress into area so stress here and area that those do, both value we have to take and based upon that we are going to calculate the forces so here i am going to consider this on this area due to stress the force is going to act that force is a compressive force and the force which is going to act at downward at steel side that force we are going to consider the tensile force okay so for in this diagram for equilibrium you can see we can we are going to consider the two forces c is equal to and t is equal to so how we can get value of c is equal to so c is equal to stress we have to consider so stress sigma cvc into area this area of triangle we are going to consider so that is 1 by 2 okay base already you have taken n d into width of the beam so width of beam is so this is formula for compressive force that we have considered the stress and we have considered the area so i can write formula like this 1 by 2 sigma cbc okay sigma cbc into nd into b so this is formula for compressive stress and that formula i have written here 1 by 2 sigma cbc nd into b same way if you are going to calculate the stresses uh, force at tension uh, tensile force you are going to calculate so again you are going to we are going to use same formula stress is equal to force upon area so if i required the force so stress into area so stress here i already have considered the stress in the steel sigma st okay and area this is area of tensile reinforcement so this is ast so i can write the tensile force as sigma st into ast okay so for equilibrium i required the equilibrium heat condition here so summation of all the compression forces should be the summation of tensile forces so i can write here c is equal to t and respective values of that both forces i am going to write here and next thing based upon these forces i can i am going to calculate the moment the position of the compression force is going to act to the triangle is a cg of this triangle if you are going to consider the cg of triangle from the base is it is h by 3 so total height of triangle is nd and h by 3 is nd by 3 so this is position of the compression force from the top compression fiber of the beam and if total distance is here d so 
remaining distance when the distance from compression force and the distance from tensile force is d minus n d by 3 we can call that term as a jd okay and this distance is called as the distance between the two forces it is called as a lever arm so lever arm we have to consider and the, by considering the lever arm we can calculate the moments okay now you, you can see the moment resistance if you if you want to get the moment resistance of this section so we are going to if i am going to uh, take the moment at the tensile for uh, stress, stress forces uh, so moment will be mr is equal to c into this lever arm so c into jd you are going to get the moment resistance when i am going to consider the moment at tensile force t and if i am going to consider the moment at compressive force c then i am going to get formula t into jd jd is your lever arm okay and if i am going to put the values in both equation the value of c and value of jd i am going to get the two equations for mr moment resistance capacity of the section so this is a value for c and this is the value for the jd that is lever arm so this how we are going to get we can calculate the moment resistance capacity of the given section in a working stress method okay hope that you understood the concept stress block diagram and how to get the values of mr okay next lecture we are going to see what is mean by this this, this we have seen the singly reinforced beam okay and this section we have considered the balance section next lecture we are going to see what is mean by balance section what is mean by under reinforced section and what is mean by over reinforced section okay that we are going to see in our next lecture today we are going to stop here thank you for joining